Hello, my name is David, and in this video, I'm demonstrating the functionality of a software application I've developed. Specifically, I'm first going to describe the purpose of this software and the type of problem it's designed to solve. Then I'm going to demonstrate how it works with an example dataset. The purpose of this software is to create the best possible assignment scheme for a scenario where you have different incoming streams which create a load on your system and your system can be described as a set of subsystems designed to process the load directed towards them. The program optimizes based on two objectives, that being the minimization of channel overflow and the minimization of the variability of the loading for each channel across the relevant time periods. The utility of this software is in providing a data-driven empirical solution to a problem that's too complicated for heuristics to solve optimally. As an example, the chart here presents a system with more than 100 load flows, the volume of a flow is described by the thickness of the colored band on the chart. The dashed line represents an example of the cumulative capacity of the various service channels at play. The premise is that the system is overcapacitated, since the aggregated flows here extend higher than the dashed line indicating service capacity. The problem then is how to group flows for assigning to service channels so as to minimize total system overflow and loading variation across time per channel. It's obvious that manually optimizing the grouping of these flows for assignment to limited service channels is essentially an impossible task for one person alone. The software I'm presenting here resolves this issue. Following some theoretical examples, I'll assign these flows to seven service channels as a numerical example. The general problem or use case description presented on the last slide encapsulates many different use cases. For example, as a thought exercise, this system might be applied to a call center. Imagine a scenario where a tech support company is contracted to provide support to a large number of customer bases, such as particular corporations. Based on the various customer base sizes, a certain number of calls might be expected from each customer base per day. The inflow of calls from a particular customer base can be thought of as a load flow in this paradigm. Then imagine that the tech support company operates multiple call centers, where for reasons of training and service effectiveness, all call agents within one call center are trained to handle calls from the same collection of client corporations or customer bases. Each call center can then be thought of as a service channel. The problem then becomes a matter of assigning customer bases, which we call load flows, to call centers, which are our service channels, so as to minimize the degree to which any one call center is overburdened, which would result in undesirably large queues for customers. At the same time, the variation in loading across time is minimized for each service channel or call agent building. This makes it easier to schedule static numbers of workers and maximize their utilization as well. Other examples for application of this program include waste management, mail sortation, and healthcare. The method is really applicable to any context at all that fits the description on the first slide. Anywhere where you have discernible categories of customers of some kind that are time dependent and separate service channels of some form, each with limited resources, this methodology offers a way to minimize the overflow and loading variation for all channels and across all relevant time periods. So now let's jump into a numerical example. The interface you see here is the primary web uh, window for the program in question, which I've created. It's essentially a one-stop shop for all the functionality that's offered. It's organized into panels based on the categorization of the functions available. On the leftmost panel, we see the functions related to importing data. Second from the left are functions related to the generation, manipulation, and optimization of the assignment schemes. So this is really the primary focus of the program. Second from the right are some functions related to minor alterations to assignment schemes and basic viewing methodologies for the assignment, the assignment scheme, which we'll see in a minute. And finally on the right are some visualization tools for the system in question, the assignment schemes and the flow viewer. On the bottom is a status bar which indicates to users the current state of the memory and storage and helps you understand where you are when you're using the program. So we'll start off the example by importing some data which essentially defines the system for the program. So we use simple comma separated value files to import the data into the program. Relevant data includes the parameters which define the system. So that being the flows, they're, they're the numbers relating to the volume of a given flow for all the time periods, and likewise the service rates for all the channels for all time periods, and the maximum number of flows that might be assigned to the different service channels. At this point, the data has been input, and so we can actually view the overall flow breakdown. 
So this is the perspective which we saw on the slide, which shows the system essentially as it stands. We have a collection of many flows, and we have a dotted line indicating the service capacity of the system. The next step is to either generate an assignment scheme or import an assignment scheme. What I'll point out now is an important feature offered by this program, which is the management of partial assignment schemes. So on this Excel file here, you can see a tabular view of the comma separated value file for a flow assignment scheme. So here we see service channels, which in this case, we might consider the waste management example where we have waste processing stations. And each of these have a number of neighborhoods assigned to them, identified by road names. So you might think of these as the neighborhoods where waste is being picked up from to be processed at a station. And we need to assign certain neighborhoods in a city to the processing stations. So the idea here with partial assignment schemes is that there may be some outside considerations that need to be made, some outside constraints imposed on the system, whereby certain assignments must be made. Certain assignments are not optional and should not be manipulated based on optimality of overflow and these other considerations that the algorithm manages. So in this circumstances where a certain assignment must be made in a specific way, a partial assignment scheme can be created just like this by typing in the values as necessary. And then this partial assignment scheme can be imported into the program. And the assignment of the rest of the 100 flows can then be optimized while leaving these defined assignments completely unchanged. So essentially you provide the program with a seed and it proceeds with an optimal process to fill out the rest of the assignment scheme. So we can see that here. I'll just open the or import the assignment scheme onto the program here. And now that that has been imported, we see the scheme data in memory, we can view the flow assignments. So here's the assignment viewer. And we can see that this matches, of course, the CSV file indicating the partial scheme. So at this point, there are just a few, a couple of neighborhoods assigned to each waste processing station. And if we view then the system performance details, we see a tabular representation, which shows the performance details, that being variation in loading and overflow of loading for each channel, for each time period. So this is a tabular view. What we see right now is that there's a lot of zero values for overflow. And the reason for that is because we haven't completed our assignment scheme. There's very few assignments that have been made. And so most channels are not overflowing. So we can complete the assignment scheme using this function over here. And just like that, if I pull up the assignments window, we see now that there are the complete set of uh, just over 100 flows that have been assigned to all these separate uh, service channels or waste processing stations in this case. And this has been done through an iterative optimal process. Essentially, the remaining flows that had not been assigned are iterated through in sequence and assigned to a station such that the overall measures of performance measures for the system are optimal at each step. So for each assignment, we take the best possible option for assignment. Now, although this process is optimal in the way it's formulated, it's not guaranteed to reach an optimal solution since the outcome would be different depending on the actual sequence in which you made the assignments. Given the combinatorial explosion proper, uh, problem, it's practically impossible to compute every possible sequence to find the true, true optimum solution. So instead, we start off with this initial solution and search for the true optimum using an algorithm. So having completed a generative process for an assignment scheme, as we just saw, we then perform the second step, which is scheme optimization. So I'll just take a moment to look at the updated performance details. We see here now that there is a overflow measure of 16,740. And so this is more to be expected given the premise was that our system was overcapacitated. So we, there are two options for scheme optimization. I'll just go with Pareto for now. And for the sake of brevity for this video, I'll simply say that the difference here is um, somewhat qualitative. Pareto optimality is a search that is more constrained 
than mean optimality. It, it applies a qualitative constraint to the search process, which may or, not be, may or may not be desirable depending on your application. So at this point, it has completed. This is an iterative process, and so it could take much longer, but for the sake of this video, I've truncated the iterative process to just three iterations. And so the solution isn't as good as it could actually be. If we go and view the system performance details now, we see that the performance went down from 16,700, the overflow rather, the performance went up, the overflow went down from 16,700 to 16,574. So again, this process would be, this would be better if we had allowed the iterative process to run to completion, but that takes some time. So I'll close off this video with a visual representation of what this optimization really looks like. So what you're about to see here is a 3D visualization of the iterative search process for optimization. So this is a 3D chart, chart in 3D space. Each point represents an assignment scheme, a possible solution. This first axis here is the iteration number. So we start off at zero. And so this dot over here represents the first iteration, which was our seed value for optimization. These other two axes represents the performance measures. The first is overflow and the second is variation. So if you recall, the objective is to minimize both overflow and loading variation across time. So as we proceed from the first iteration to the next and subsequent iterations, we see that these dots are always moving to the right. Naturally, they're moving along that iteration axis. So the question is then, where do they move in with respect to the other two axes? So we see that as the iteration number progresses, these other dots representing assignment schemes continually move to the left with respect to this overflow axis, indicating minimization of overflow. And that occurs very rapidly within the first 10 or so iterations. And with respect to the variation axis, they continuously move downwards with respect to that kind of Z uh, axis. And so we see that the first dot is up there and the final dots are much lower down on this axis. So what's going on here is that the program begins with a assignment scheme, the seed value, and it checks every possible change that could be made to that assignment scheme. That is any number of flows that could be swapped or flows that could be moved from one service channel to another. It checks all of those possibilities for which there are many thousands and then evaluates each one of them according to the performance measures and selects the change which provides the best performance measure outcomes and proceeds with that change. It carries out that swap or that shift and it creates having done that, a new assignment scheme, which is only just slightly different. And that is what is represented by the subsequent dot following on the iteration axis. So what we see here is essentially having started with an initial assignment scheme, we make 40, uh, 45 or so single changes to that assignment scheme. And this results with our final solution, which is characterized by this, uh, the measures uh, according to this point on the axes for overflow and variation. So to summarize, the software I've developed offers a means of performing a optimal solution search in a discrete solution space for assignment problems, which are too complex computationally to carry out by hand and too complex for simple heuristics to provide near optimum solutions. And with the test data that I have been using, the optimal solutions that the program provides in a short amount of time are within 1% of the best optimal solutions that could be found otherwise. So thanks for watching. I hope that this video might be informative and helpful. Feel free to reach out to me for any questions, inquiries, or other matters related to this. Thank you and take care.